we, we had this morning for the Donnelly family. I'm ready to preach. I'm psyched. I'm ready to go. Our New Testament scripture lesson this morning is from Matthew chapter 14, 13 through 21. Hear the word of God. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place. It's getting late. Send these crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. He directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people, and they all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning with the Old Testament, Jacob wrestling with you. You changing Jacob's name, changing his life. In the New Testament, Lord, where the disciples wrestled with you about these loaves and these fishes, we ask, Lord, that you would help us to wrestle with you this morning so that we might receive your word with power, that it might settle deeply within us so that it could impact and change our lives. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, quite a few years ago when I was uh, teaching art, I had a young man in, in class who was one of our top wrestlers at Martin's Ferry. Wrestling is a very important sport. And Mark Sperry. He was a, a joy to have in class. He was always smiling and enthusiastic. He loved art. One day he came into class wearing this shirt, Jesus Trained. I, I thought to myself, what in the world? I was taken aback for a second. But then when I thought about it, I, I thought, you know, I, I, I like that shirt. Now that I think about it, when you, when you think about Jesus. Most people picture Jesus as this mild-mannered, uh, unimpressive person, but that is not true according to Scripture. Jesus was, was a carpenter. During his youth, he probably worked 10 to 12 hours a day with heavy beams, working with that carpentry equipment. I'm guessing he was pretty muscular. And, and as we look at it, his life throughout the, the Scriptures, he, he had no problem aggressively confronting self-righteous Jewish religious leaders, or, or he had no problem taking on the challenge of, of healing the world's dreaded diseases like, like blindness and deafness, and, and even mental instability. And, and we know what, what happened when he entered the temple courts at, at Passover. He physically lifted the tables of the money changers and the animal traders and tipped them over and, and physically pushed them out of the temple courts. You, you cannot be a milk toast Messiah and do all of that. But was Jesus a wrestler? Well, I think in a very spiritual sense, Jesus was a wrestler then and is a, a wrestler now. Jesus challenges you and me to step into the ring with, with him. And our Old Testament example, an example, that's exactly what God did with Jacob. God challenged Jacob to step into the ring with him. We know the kind of guy Jacob was. I talked about him last week. He, his name meant grabber. He was out to get things for himself, he, even when he was born, like I said, he grabbed his brother Esau's ankle and said, you're not going to get ahead of me. But his grabbing had gotten Jacob into trouble. Esau was pretty bad at it. And he, Esau had a big band of men 
that were coming after him. And, and so Jacob had found himself in a very desperate place. Sometimes, though, it, it is in the desperate places in, in life that God finally gets our attention. When we get in a desperate place in life, we, we finally look up and say, Lord, I can't handle it myself. I, I need your strength. I, I, I need to know your, your power in my life. So here is the scene from Genesis uh, chapter 32, verses 24 and 25. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. And when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Now, one thing you could say about Jacob was that he was very strong-willed. And I know some of you out there are strong, strong-willed people. That's a good thing, I think, if that strong will is directed in the right direction. And I think that's what God was trying to do with Jacob. Take that strong will instead of move it, moving it from that selfish direction that, that he had lived out his life doing and move it in the direction of, of God's will. And so God brought him in, in, into this wrestling ring to try to change it. That's how God works in, in our lives. God, God works to transform us from being self-centered to being God-centered. And what a difference it makes when we make that transition from, from being self-centered to God-centered. It's not easy to make that transition. But when God gets us into the ring, that's what He is trying to do to it. And it's during that tussle, it's during that match, that God changes us. Notice that God and Jacob wrestled all night until there came a point when God reached out and dislocated Jacob's hip with just a simple touch. Jacob was very strong-willed, but God, God was all-powerful. All it took was a simple touch to dislocate his hip. Now, I've never had a, a dislocated bone. I don't know if anybody here has had one or not, but I hear they are incredibly painful to experience. But here's, here's the hard fact about life. Real growth, real transformation always involves struggle and pain. That is true of, of a butterfly that's fighting its way out of that cocoon to finally spread its wings and, and, and fly away. And, and it's true of, of a person who is fighting his or her way out of a depression from a breakup or a loss. It, it is the struggle and, and it is uh, the pain that begins to change us. And God uses that, that time of suffering to work at the deepest levels of, of our lives. During this wrestling match with, with uh, God, God put a hurting on Jacob's life. But listen to how Jacob responded. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Notice that Jacob, even though he was suffering, he was hurting, he did not give up. And this is very important. Even though he was in a lot of pain, he had spent his energy, he was tired, he didn't quit. Rather, he wanted to know how this being, how God could bless him. How could you bless me, Lord? See, God brought Jacob to that point where transformation was possible. At that point, Jacob changed from self-centeredness to looking to God for God's blessing. He wanted to know how he could fulfill God's calling. As soon as Jacob arrived at that place of transformation, what, what did God say to him? God said, what is your name? 
God said to him, Jacob means grabber. I'm going to change your name. The new name I'm going to give you is Israel. Do you know what Israel means? Overcome. He went from a grabber to an overcome. When was the last time you wrestled with God? Was it over something that God wanted you to, to give up? You wanted to hang on to it, but it was bringing you down? Was it over a new direction that God wanted you to go, but that direction was out of your comfort zone, and, and so you rebelled against it? Was it over some failure in life you just couldn't get over, but God challenged you to reach further than you've ever reached before so that you could become an overcomer? You see, it is in the match that we are transformed. It is in the pain and the struggle and the bruises and the blood that we are changed. Is God challenging you to step in the ring? Do you dare do that? Well, Jacob discovered it was incredibly hard, but one of the most necessary and blessed experiences of his life. Listen to his reaction. Genesis 32, 29 and 30, Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. Notice this position at, in life where Jacob had just arrived. He'd seen God face to face, but he wasn't dead. In fact, he was alive. He, he was fully alive. In this wrestling match with, with the Lord, Jacob had entered into a new kind of relationship with God, a more intimate relationship. No longer did he view God at a distance. He grappled with God. Now he knew God at, at a whole new level. Now he had a whole new purpose, and his life was going to be a channel now through whom God would bless others. What a change God took Jacob through. It's the same change God wants to take all of us through. God wants to turn us from being grafters for ourselves into overcomers for the kingdom. Now, our New Testament lesson from Matthew, we find Jesus in a very, very difficult place. The news of, of John the Baptist, his cousin, and, and his execution by King Herod had reached him. All he wanted to do was go to a solitary place and mourn the loss of his friend, but he had, but, but he had responsibilities. The crowd found out where he was going. And, and they came out, in fact, they poured out by the thousands. Now, Jesus didn't say, go back to, to where you came. I, I'm hurting inside. I've lost someone that is dear to me. He didn't say that. In fact, the scripture said, says that Jesus took the time to heal their sick, minister to them, and, and to teach them. Now, after many hours passed, the disciples became concerned, starting at Matthew 14, 15, as the evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place. It's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. See, the disciples had arrived at that place of life where, where they needed a transformational experience. Jesus wanted them to enter into this ring of transformation, this wrestling ring. He wanted them to experience the power of God so that they could fulfill God's calling on their lives. What does Jesus say to them? Matthew 14, 16 and 17, Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. In other words, come on, Jesus, you can't expect us to do the impossible. 
And in that ring, Jesus put a move on them. He put them into the headlock, he turned them upside down, and he showed, showed them a whole new way of, of looking at things. He said, bring me the loaves and the fish. He took them, he blessed them, he gave them back to the disciples. And then his disciples distributed them to the people. They experienced the power of God. They learned a lesson that no matter how little you have, if you take your, your, your gifts, your time, your talent, your abilities, and you place them into God's hands, God can do amazing things, things that you thought were impossible with those gifts. In the ring, Jesus pushed them beyond the limit, beyond what they thought was possible. But when the match was over, they began to understand that with God, all things are possible. Have you been wrestling with God lately? What's he trying to teach you? Perhaps God wants to empower you to be an overcomer, to break the chains, whatever is pulling you down. Perhaps, like the disciples, God wants to teach you to take what you have and entrust it to Him. And He will put His hand of power upon it and multiply it and show you what's possible with God. Whatever it is, when you step into the ring with the Lord, expect to become an overcomer. Amen.